Fun fact, this movie is so badass and high octane, your penis will grow an inch or two just watching it. I haven't checked yet, but that's what it feels like. Two title scene. Fury Road is the fourth installment of the Mad Max franchise. Why have you not heard of the Mad Max franchise if you're like under 30? That's because there hasn't been a Mad Max movie in like 20 something years. And that is sort of a thing to worry about because traditionally these 20 year later sequels don't go well. And going into this movie you don't really know what to expect. It looks freaking weird. It's directed by George Miller who likes to go off the ball. And the plot's kind of insane. You have Tom Hardy jumping into the role made famous by Mel Gibson as Mad Max. He discovers these crazy, psycho cult dudes who have all these ladies that they're trying to marry into their crazy cult or something. And Max sa saves them, and thus it's basically a two-hour action scene of Max trying to stop these bad guys, save these women, and just be the fucking hero! And it's fucking amazing! Holy crap, this film is awesome as all hell. First up, and its biggest strength is, like I said, it's basically a two-hour action sequence. There's pauses and stuff. There's a couple moments. I maybe not be describing the plot as best as possible because they are sort of hard to follow because the film is so high-octane and adventurous. But you definitely get the sense that this is a lived-in, gritty world, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that almost all of this movie is practical effects. You see Tom Hardy going off on some sort of pole in the trailer. That's in this movie and it's fucking amazing. You see crazy dudes with electric guitars firing fire out of them. That's all practical effects. There is CG, obviously. There's some green screen. Charlie Theron's character is like a robot arm. That's obviously CG. It's the sandstorm is CG. Stuff that can only be CG is CG. Everything else is real, practical, and you feel it, and it's gritty, and it's dark, and it connects you to everything going on, and it connects you to the characters, which is a good thing, because there's not a lot of character development in this movie, sadly. Um, first up, uh, Mad Max is not very interesting. He doesn't talk much, and Tom Hardy's Australian accent isn't that great. But from, he doesn't seem like a bad person, he just doesn't really come across as interesting. And part of the problem, if you can call it that, is Charlie Theron's character is really badass. Her name is like Ferocia or something. It's just, it's such a hard movie to follow and keep track of from a character perspective. And that is a problem, but you don't really need that. I don't really need to remember this chick's name. I don't really need to be invested in Max because you feel all the emotion going through their heads at all time. Her character was badass and I did feel for her. The other, like, bride lady peoples, they're fine. Nothing really that great. Um, but the real thing with Steel the Villains are the villains in this movie. They are fucking amazing. The main guy, who doesn't really have much of a interesting personality, but he still looks fucking amazing. You have this dude who like looks all chapped lips and dry. He's actually very interesting and gets you into the mentality of the villains. And it, from that perspective, it's just a very interesting, fun, high-octane movie. It's very cartoony, but that kind of works for it. It knows it's overly ridiculous. It knows it's in a crazy, insane, post-popular world. It knows it's never going to give you enough detail about anything for you to like start nitpicking. If you're going into this movie looking for something serious and intelligent that you want to judge and take seriously, this is not that. If you're looking for a high-octane, insane adventure, then this is the film for you. Again, would have liked a little more of the characters. Maybe the plot could have been explained a little bit better. Maybe it's just a little too simple. And between everything I kept thinking, maybe it should be a bit more complicated. But I will say Mad Max Fury Road is a 9 out of 10. It was almost 10, but, you know, again, a couple issues. But again, it's fun, it's awesome, go see it, don't see Pitch Perfect 2! Okay, Pitch Perfect 2 could be fine, but for God's sake, it's got Rebel Wilson doing Rebel Wilson, it can't be all that good. But what did you think? In the comment section below, give me your thoughts on Mad Max Fury Road, what you like about these kind of movies, and as always, click the like and click the subscribe, but I won't see Pitch Perfect 2.